When I was researching and building my Formula One gearboxes, uh, I became obsessed with the extremely expensive miniature hydraulics and valves uh, these gearboxes utilize to shift. I had wild dreams of creating my own 3D printed miniature hydraulics for like an active suspension or some sort of robot actuator. I actually played with a bunch of different FDM 3D printed hydraulic pump designs and FDM just ended up not being accurate enough to make a miniature pump. Uh, but after the 3D printed screw compressor video, I realized an industrial SLA resin, kind of like uh, JLC 3DP CBY resin, uh, might be strong enough and accurate enough to actually work as a hydraulic pump. So I went ahead and designed this proof of concept hydraulic system just to see if it's going to possibly work for something. If you're not familiar with hydraulics, I'm just going to give you the world's fastest overview of how a hydraulic system works. Up here in the top left, we actually have the reservoir or the tank that just stores the hydraulic fluid, uh, which is usually a specialized oil of some sort. Below that, we have the pump and the motor. There's a whole bunch of different types of pumps. I'm using a gear pump. I'm not going to go into all the specifics of the different types of pumps, but essentially the pump draws the fluid from the reservoir and forces it into the hydraulic system, creating flow and pressure. Next in the system, we have something called a pressure relief valve. Uh, hydraulic fluid is incompressible, unlike air, and hydraulic systems can generate several thousand PSI of pressure or several hundred bars of pressure. And you really need something like a pressure relief valve uh, so that you can actually regulate the pressure in the system by returning the excess flow back to the tank or the low pressure side of the pump. Next up is actually the control valve and the control valve actually controls the direction, flow rate, and the pressure of the hydraulic fluid within the actuators. So this is the thing that actually moves the actuator itself. And then you actually have the actuator, which is what converts this hydraulic energy into mechanical energy. So speaking of valves, uh, for this particular project, I'm just using two types of valves. The first is the actual pressure relief valve, which is just a simple ball spring valve. And essentially there's a spring that pushes the ball against a seat. As the pressure increases inside the hydraulic system, it'll eventually lift the ball up off of the seat and allow the excess flow to be diverted back to the holding tank. Um, there's a screw on the top that can adjust the pressure on the spring and thus adjust the overall pressure in the system. Uh, the second type of valve used in this system is a four-way valve and there's a bunch of different types of four-way valves out there but for simplicity i've designed just a flat disc valve in the first graphic the valve is actually you can see it's in the neutral position the pressure side and the return side are both blocked and this essentially locks the cylinder into a fixed position in the second graphic, the valve is rotated, so the pressure side connects to the yellow port and the green port is connected to the return to tank. Uh, this causes the cylinder to extend. In the last graphic, the valve is rotated so that the pressure side connects to the green port and the yellow port is routed to return to tank, and this contracts the cylinder. One of the cool things about 3D printing is the ability to create complex internal shapes inside of parts which allowed me to actually integrate the pump, the valves, and the plumbing all into one single 3D printed block. The less discrete parts we have, the tighter we can package the hydraulics, but more importantly, there's less chance for leakage. So we look at this a little deeper. This is the CAD model for the prototype. I found it was easiest to just design all of the internals for the hydraulics, the cavity for the pump, the piping between the valves, and the pump and the valves themselves as their own solids. And then as a last step, I just draw a big block around all of the internals and subtract that internal structure from that solid block. That way I don't have to try to think abstractly about how all of these pipes are routed. I chose a gear pump primarily because it's easy to design and secondly, because most miniature hydraulic pumps out there seem to be gear pumps. So I figured there just had to be a reason for this. 
Obviously all this could be a lot smaller, but again, this is just a proof of concept. And honestly, I'm limited by the size of the connectors and the lines that I'm using right now for the hydraulics. And then just walking through the actual piping here itself, you can see the gear pump itself, which just draws fluid from the reservoir. It takes the fluid, pushes it out around the outside perimeter of the gears and forces it out the high pressure side of the pump. Now this is fed to both the pressure relief valve, which has, again, returns it to tank if the ball valve opens up and it also feeds it downstream to the valves themselves. And again, you can see the valve itself has, uh, just like we mentioned, it's a four way valve. So you have four different ports on the valve. Two of the ports are connected to either end of the actuator itself. One is returned to tank and the other is the high pressure port. So once I had my 3D model design, it was really easy to just upload the design to JLC 3DP's website. And the prices are actually really fantastic. Even for this higher end industrial resin, for four copies of each of the parts of the pumps, valves, and actuators, it was less than $20 plus shipping to wherever you live. For me, it's absolutely worth it to not have to deal with the messy multi-stage process of SLA 3D printing and to be able to have these parts printed on a very accurate industrial quality machine definitely helps for what we're trying to do here. And to just let everyone know, if you sign up on JLC 3DP's website with this link, uh, you can actually get up to $60 in coupons that you can put towards your 3D printing projects. So these are the finished 3D printed parts and they look awesome. Particularly, I'm impressed with the transparent reservoir tank, which actually looks like an injection molded part. I've gone through all the parts, cleaned them up, sanded everything as flat as I could. I have added a bearing, so an MR63 bearing to both sides of the input shaft going into the gear pump itself. There is a tiny little O-ring inside of the housing that supports the bearing so that the hydraulic fluid does not leak out the shaft itself. This is the actual pressure relief valve here. As you can see, it's just a little six millimeter airsoft BB with a spring out of a pen. We've got a little O-ring on the adjuster and we just screw that in and that keeps the pressure valve in there. On here, we have the ports for the four-way valve itself. So this is the actual cylinder actuator itself. It's a very simple construction here. It's just a brass tube since I thought that would be the easiest and the smoothest way to be able to seal against. I have a piston on the inside that has two rubber O-rings on it that will seal the high pressure and the low pressure side of the cylinder. So on either end of the brass tube here, we have these two blocks. On the bottom block, I've just gone ahead and epoxied it to the brass tube so that we have zero chances of leaks but I need to be able to disassemble the cylinder still somehow. So on the top, we just have this O-ring that actually seals the top block onto the cylinder. There's a little port in internally in the actual block itself, and then I can screw these pneumatic fittings into either end, and that allows me to just you know hook up the hydraulic tubes very easily. And then to tie the entire cylinder together, I just have some M2 studding, which I have cut to length, and that allows me to pull the entire assembly together and to be able to disassemble it easily. And then to actually seal the shaft, the actual shaft of the actuator, uh, we have two silicone O-rings and a spacer in between them. Now you'll notice it's a carbon fiber shaft. That is not ideal. I thought I had some stainless steel rod. I did not, but I took the carbon fiber shaft and I coat it in CA glue and then I sand it off with some 1000 grit sandpaper. And that's because the carbon shafts are very abrasive and they'll quickly eat through any kind of rubber seal. And that CA glue will give it a nice smooth surface to slide through the seal without leaking. Okay, test one. We're just trying some water in there. It's gonna be soapy water. It should fire out uh, the back because I don't have the valve on it. Fire in the hole. Wow. Okay. I did not expect, one, that the gear pump would actually prime itself. Two, it fired it a lot further than I thought it was going to.
So this is 300 grams. Let's see if she can do anything. Oh yeah. No problem, 300 grams. So the first couple tests weren't super impressive on the amount of pressure I was creating out of the pump. And it occurred to me that I wasn't using an actual hydraulic oil. And I just looked it up, the thickness of this CHF 11, which is a old BMW power steering fluid. It's about 30 times the thickness of water. So that's a substantial difference in viscosity. So we're going to go ahead and try this and see what happens and go for broke. Too much. Basically, you can lift that. And we have a massive leak. So this first version of a 3D printed hydraulic system isn't exactly amazing, but it has a lot of possibilities, I think. Using SLA 3D prints to create the pump housing and all the internal plumbing worked great. In fact, I probably should have used the SLA 3D printed parts for everything like the valves and all the other uh, parts and pieces because I think it would have sealed a lot better. Obviously, the pump and the valves developed a lot of leaks, but most of those issues could be addressed with some simple design changes and not using things like carbon fiber shafts. Despite the tight tolerances inside the pump, the gears weren't generating an immense amount of pressure. With some math, I figured the pump is generating anywhere between 18 and 22 PSI of pressure, which is very low. There was probably a lot of internal leakage between the gears and there are ways to improve that with a thrust plate design, but I think a piston or a vein pump might be more effective at this scale, but I'm not sure. I learned a lot and had a lot of fun seeing all this work. Uh, hydraulics are not something that I'm an expert at at all. Uh, I think it's something fun to play with in the future because if we can generate even a few hundred PSI of working pressure, it would create a very strong miniature actuator that we could use in a lot of different projects. So again, I want to thank uh, JLC3DP for reaching out and helping out on this project and make sure to check the link below to get your discounts.